버디부터 자릅니다 여기 음, 여기 나는 눈 This is hands down one of the most visually stunning and explosive crime action films in recent years. The ever stunning Kim Hyesu, sporting a badass haircut, charges into the heart of a mafia gang, wiping them out single-handedly as if powered by some next-level boost. The story kicks off in a luxurious five-star hotel. Every day at 6 p.m., high-ranking officials and the elite of Korea gather here to unwind, unaware that every move they make is being recorded. Meanwhile, our heroine Hyun Young sits coolly in the surveillance room, plotting what seems to be a massive conspiracy. Sure enough, the scene shifts, and our suave male lead, Sang Hoon, makes a grand entrance, as the elites are abruptly awakened from their sleep. Their initial outrage quickly turns to dread as they are shown videos of their shady dealings. One by one, they are forced to sign unfair contracts. Naturally, some resist, only to find themselves locked in a construction site bathhouse's punishment. This is the dirty little secret behind Dragon Gang, Seoul's most powerful crime syndicate, and their attempt to go legit. Hyun Young and Sang Hoon, the gang leader's trusted lieutenants, play a crucial role in the plan. However, there's one last hurdle they haven't cleared Prosecutor Choi who sits at the top of Korea's judicial system and has been tirelessly working to take them down. Due to his unique position, Hyun Young arranges a private meeting with him. Prosecutor Choi, fully aware of the game, refuses to cooperate, boasting about his clean record, even claiming that his shoes are so old he's worn them for seven years. Hyun Young, not buying it, recalls what she saw the previous night and sarcastically retorts that his frugality is just pathetic. This comment makes Choi's face darken, and he warns that a single phone call from him could starve their entire gang for months. If they want to continue operating in Seoul, they'd better show some respect. Little does he know, his arrogance just enraged Hyun Young. After returning home, Prosecutor Choi immediately tries to contact Wei, the lover he spent a romantic night with, but to no avail. It finally dawns on him that his so-called heroic rescue a few nights ago was actually a well-orchestrated trap set by Dragon Gang. With Choi now firmly in their grasp, the Dragon Gang boss gathers the high-ranking officials under his control for a celebration. However, their joy is short-lived as a man wearing sunglasses bursts into the room. Though young, this man is the head of the Qing Gang, and even the Dragon Gang boss has to give him some face. He's here to request a favor he wants to use Dragon Gang's territory in Seoul to sell illegal goods. Naturally, the Dragon Gang boss, who's trying to clean up his image, refuses. But then the man drops a bombshell. Sang Hoon has already agreed to the deal. Furious, the boss summons Sang Hoon. Sang Hoon admits that the Qing Gang had indeed reached out to him, but he was only considering the offer and hadn't yet reported it. His reluctance to let go of the lucrative illegal trade is the real reason for his hesitation. <laughs> 모두 그 선을 지키기 때문에 기억해 자네는 인천 안에서만 움직일 수 있는 거야 자네 아버지 덕에 at that moment, he took off his sunglasses, revealing that one of his eyes was blind. It turns out that 10 years ago, there was a massive conflict between the Qing Gang and Dragon Gang. Both sides suffered casualties in a brutal battle for territory, but Dragon Gang ultimately emerged victorious. In retaliation, the Qing Gang dishonorably attacked the Dragon Gang boss's family. The boss was severely injured, while his wife and son were killed on the spot. This violation of the unspoken rule family is off limits ignited Hyun Young's fury. She retaliated by using a seductive trap to assassinate the Qing gang boss herself. Not only that, but she tracked down his son, who had fled abroad, and gouged out one of his eyes as vengeance. Since then, the Dragon Gang has solidified its dominance in Seoul, forcing the Qing Gang to retreat to Incheon. But now, the once timid and fearful Gong Myon has returned for revenge. Though he is ambitious, it's clear that for now, he lacks the strength to truly challenge the Dragon Gang. After driving Gong Myon away, Hyun Yun personally tended to Sang Hoon's wounds. It turns out that Sang Hoon was originally brought into the gang by Hyun Yun herself and the tin he used to store painkillers was a gift from her when he got injured for the first time. The fact that he had kept it all these years showed just how deeply devoted he was to Hyun Young. For years, Hyun Young had been aware of Sang Hoon's feelings for her, 
but she never acknowledged them. On the other hand, Wei, the woman who seduced Prosecutor Choi, had a strong interest in Sang Hoon. Despite her many attempts to win his affection, Sang Hoon remained completely indifferent. As Wei looked at the tattoo of Hyun Young's name on Sang Hoon's body, she was heartbroken, completely unaware that Hyun Young was actually her own boss. Not long after, a bitter Prosecutor Choi, still reeling from being outplayed, came to Sang Hoon armed with a stack of documents. He revealed that all of the Dragon Gang's clean businesses had been transferred to the name of the boss's son, Ju Wan. If the boss were to die, Sang Hoon, despite being the boss's right-hand man, would inherit nothing. Choi also pointed out a crucial difference. Hyun Young is Ju Wan's biological mother. Sang Hoon was stunned. He had no idea. Back during the bloody conflict between the Dragon Gang and Xin Gang, Sang Hoon had gone to prison after taking the fall for the boss. After Hyun Young assassinated the Qin Gang leader, she was also imprisoned. Zhu Wan was born while she was behind bars. However, the boss and Hyun Young never publicly acknowledged their relationship. So even Zhu Wan himself was unaware that Hyun Young was his mother. Watching Hyun Young act like a nanny as she went to pick up Zhu Wan, who had just returned from abroad, Sang Hoon was almost certain that Prosecutor Choi's claims were true. Furious, he confronted Hyun Young, demanding to know why even a prosecutor knew this secret while he remained in the dark. Her silent response only made him feel more insignificant. <laughs> Seething with frustration, Sang Hoon went to Wei, seeking an outlet for his anger. At first, Wei was overjoyed, thinking her moment had finally come. But to her shock, Sang Hoon handed her a wad of cash instead. Heartbroken, Wei felt deeply hurt, while Sang Hoon, still enraged, stormed off. The next day, Sang Hoon unexpectedly brought Gong Myung to meet with Hyun Young to discuss a partnership. Naturally, Hyun Young gave them the cold shoulder. By this point, she had realized that Sang Hoon was planning to betray her. But out of respect for their long-standing relationship, she didn't confront him directly. Instead, she quietly warned the boss to be extra cautious in the coming days. What she didn't know was that Sang Hoon had already secretly met with Prosecutor Choi. The two planned to join forces with Gong Myung to change the power dynamics. Sang Hoon wanted to eliminate the boss and take control of Dragon Gang, while Prosecutor Choi sought to recover his compromising video. They set their plan in motion, each handling their part of the deal. Sang Hoon approached the boss first, claiming that Prosecutor Choi wanted to negotiate face to face regarding the video. Meanwhile, Prosecutor Choi was searching for the video at Hyun Young's private club. Unfortunately for him, the women working there were fiercely loyal to Hyun Young, and even though he showed no gentlemanly charm, none of them betrayed her. Frustrated, Choi turned his attention to the elderly housekeeper, who was clearly the most devoted to Hyun Young. In the midst of this, Wei overheard their conversation and finally realized that the Hyun Young Sang Hoon had been obsessing over was none other than her own boss. This discovery turned her into a potential wild card in the unfolding drama. Hyun Young soon learned about the situation at her club and immediately tried to warn the boss, but it was too late Sang Hoon was already with him. Although the boss pretended that the call was from his son, Ju Wan, it wasn't enough to stop Sang Hoon from placing him under house arrest. Realizing the urgency, Hyun Young went to her son and gave him a piece of paper with an address, instructing him to hide there for safety. However, given the strained relationship between them, it was unclear whether Ju Wan would follow her advice. Hyun Young then decided to call Prosecutor Choi directly, attempting to strike a deal, the video in exchange for the boss. But just as negotiations were about to begin, a car suddenly appeared. <laughs> Gong Myung, seeking revenge, hovered a cutting tool menacingly over Hyun Young, moving it back and forth across her body. His henchman warned him that Sang Hoon wouldn't be pleased, but Gong Myung, blinded by his own arrogance, ignored them. As the cutting tool was about to touch Hyun Young's eye, gunshots rang out from outside it was Sang Hoon, arriving just in time to save her. Though he may have been infatuated, he was deadly serious when it came to protecting Hyun Young. He mercilessly killed everyone, including Gong Myung, who was supposed to be his ally. Even though Sang Hoon now had control of the gang, she still refused to acknowledge his feelings, which infuriated him. Sang Hoon ordered one of his men to keep an eye on her, while he went alone to confront the boss. Sang Hoon, driven by his feelings, confronted the boss, ready to settle things in a one-on-one -on -one duel. He had gone to great lengths for the woman he loved, proving his sincerity, but the boss refused to fight, instead trying to teach him a lesson about love that to truly love someone means being willing to sacrifice for them not necessarily possessing them. The boss begged Sang Hoon not to harm Hyun Young or Ju Hwan after his death. Hearing this, Sang Hoon, overwhelmed by emotion, granted his request with a single gunshot. 
killing the boss instantly. Meanwhile, Wei showed up at the place where Hian Yun was being held. It was clear she had betrayed them because of her jealousy over Sang Hoon's affection for Hian Yun. Hian Yun initially tried to reason with her, urging her to face reality. But before she could finish, Wei slammed the bus door shut. Wei had given up on Sang Hoon ever since he gave her that wad of cash. Now, after seeing how far he'd gone for Hian Yun, she was utterly disgusted. Hian Yun tried to drive the bus away to escape. But there were too many obstacles, and the bus was ultimately overturned by a construction vehicle. Just as Sang Hoon's henchman approached to check on the situation, Hian Yun suddenly emerged with a cutting tool and fought back. <laughs> In a critical moment, Wei drove a car into the fray to help Hian Yun escape. But Hian Yun soon got caught up in another fight with one of the men. Wei once again intervened, stabbing the man and allowing Hian Yun to break free. Tragically, Wei was stabbed in return and died from her injuries. Hian Yun narrowly escaped and sought refuge at the house of the loyal housekeeper to recover. Meanwhile, Hian Yun's son, Zhu Wan, ignored her warning to lay low and instead attended his father's funeral. Unsurprisingly, Prosecutor Choi was watching closely, not knowing that Hian Yun was his mother. Zhu Wan believed the prosecutor's lies that she had killed his father. Worse yet, Zhu Wan agreed to help Choi arrange a meeting with his mother. Forced into a corner, Hian Yun revealed the truth to her confused son. But by then, Prosecutor Choi had already aimed his gun at them. <laughs> Desperate to protect Zhu Wan, Hian Yun shielded him with her body. Exhausted from shooting, the prosecutor began demanding the incriminating video, threatening to kill her son if she didn't comply. Just then, Zhu Wan stabbed Prosecutor Choi from behind, temporarily saving Hian Yun. However, overwhelmed by the shocking revelation of who his mother really was, Zhu Wan couldn't handle it and fled, leaving Hian Yun behind. Outside, Zhu Wan ran straight into Sang Hoon, who was burning a car and waiting for him. Sang Hoon quickly captured him. Meanwhile, Hian Yun was still locked in combat with Prosecutor Choi. Suddenly, two fierce dogs attacked, biting Choi and sending him into a fit of agony. At that moment, Sang Hoon arrived, and Choi finally realized that he had been nothing more than a pawn in the grander scheme. Yet, Sang Hoon, still driven by his feelings, once again asked Hian Yun if she would be with him. When she refused, he used Zhu Wan as leverage, threatening to harm him. Before leaving, Sang Hoon handed Prosecutor Choi over to Hian Yun for her to deal with as she saw fit. Once she had recovered, Hian Yun wasted no time in executing Choi, as there was no longer any reason to keep him alive now that the gang was gone. With that settled, she prepared for a final confrontation with Sang Hoon. But she didn't want to give in, nor did she want to keep deceiving herself or Sang Hoon any longer. So, she chose the most drastic path forward. She just wanted Sang Hoon to let them go. When she found him, despite all the bloodshed, Sang Hoon was still devoted to her. But Hyun Young had no desire to keep up the cycle of fighting and killing she wanted out. In the end, Sang Hoon fell to the ground. But as Hyun Young looked closer, she realized that his gun had no bullets. In that moment, Sang Hoon finally came to terms with his feelings, accepting that he could never have her. After Hyun Young left, Sang Hoon chose to end his own life, bringing his tragic, unrequited devotion to a close. Yet, even in his final moments, he hadn't harmed Ju Wan. In fact, he had already contacted the housekeeper to ensure Ju Wan was safely found at the dock. When Hyun Young later learned that her son was safe, she finally felt at peace, though sadly, she never got to see him again. <laughs> <laughs>